All right, welcome back. So as a little bit of um, sort of uh, an additional piece of advice about debugging uh, and working with your code, I want to talk just briefly and introduce you to a few things, useful uh, pieces of Git usage, and in particular stuff that you can do directly from Android Studio. So Git is not a topic that we expect you to master uh, in this class, and it's not something that we go into a lot of detail about how to use. Git is something that you are just beginning your relationship with. If you intend to become a software creator and build cool stuff, you will use it on a day-to-day -day basis and you will develop workflows that are appropriate to what you are doing. And those can vary a lot depending on whether you work primarily on solo projects or with small numbers of people or as part of a large organization, in which case there are probably very well-established procedures for using Git properly. All to say that it's very hard to teach people how to use Git correctly when you're just doing you know, a solo project or working with one other person closely, right? Those are not opportunities to encourage Git good uh, usage patterns for Git. And a lot of times attempts to do that just end up sort of becoming these cargo cult things where you're showing people how to say, do it, you must do it this way. And they're like, why? It doesn't make any sense. And then you realize later on it did make sense, but it's hard to, to hear that when you're just getting started, right? Okay, all to say that Git is tremendously useful and it can help you out in some really useful ways. So I'm gonna go ahead and revisit this problem I had before with my MP0 starter code. Now I'm doing this in Kotlin, but it sort of doesn't matter, right? This, uh, these tools are available to you both in Java or in Kotlin and they work identically. Um, so let's say now, you know, one of the important things here is coming up with a workflow that allows you to spot problems quickly. So imagine I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm working along, I'm working on uh, the checkpoints for MP0, and suddenly I run the test suite and everything's broken. And I'm like, uh-oh, what happened here? Something went wrong. So, you know, I could go ahead and look at the stack trace like I did before, but if I'm committing often and I'm working slowly, the other thing that might have happened is I might have made a change that caused the problem, and I might have just made that change. And so, you know, sometimes I've got the file open that I was working in, I can be like, oh, I just wrote that line, but sometimes I'm jumping around between multiple files and it can be sort of hard to keep track of what's changing. But the great thing is, Git knows exactly what you changed about your code and it has some really nice ways of showing. So let's go through one. One way to figure out, so Git works in terms of commits. So when you commit your code, essentially you produce uh, a, a, a point in time that you can always go back to and as you work forward, Git will help you, uh, Git makes it easy to see changes with respect to the prior commit. Now you can see, Git allows you to basically see changes between any two commits and between your code right now and any other commit. But frequently, the most useful set of changes is between your code and your previous commit. This is why we encourage you and sometimes even require that you commit when you've passed a test because the code is working, so you wanna make sure Git remembers all that code, so you commit, but also because then as you work forward, it's easy to see the changes you've made respective to the prior commit, right? Again, Git gives you great tools for examining any set of changes in your repository, but a lot of times one of the most useful set of changes to see is the changes from your previous commit. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go over here, and, and, and the easiest way to do this in Android Studio is just open up the commit dialog, um, and then if I double click on this, what it's gonna do is it's gonna actually open up this side-by-side -side view and it, well, okay, so let me, let me close this because this is a little bit confusing. Uh, let's see here. Um, all right, so the first thing I can, it, it tells me, which is really helpful, is it tells me which files are changed. So you'll see that I made a change to the test suite, which is a problem I'm gonna deal with in a second. And I've also made a change to server.kt. Now, now who knows what caused the error, right? But let's open up server.kt first. So if I double click this, what you see is on the left, this thing up here is the commit ID. So this is the version that Git has committed in the previous commit that's in my repository. So the last commit I made, uh, you'll see that I was loading places.csv and now I'm loading places.cvs. So essentially, uh, and if I made multiple changes to this file, um, you know, A Android Studio is good at showing me kind of all of, all of the changes that I made, right? And you'll see there's a little uh, thing over here. This helps me zero in on where I've made changes, right? So you'll see, and now I can see exactly what the change was that, that I made. And actually, I think I can just go ahead and edit this if I want to. 
and, and now they're the same. And you'll see that actually it removed that from my uh, from the commit dialog entirely because the two files are now the same. Okay, so I've gone ahead and fixed that bug. Now, now the other problem I'm going to have, so I'm going to go ahead and, and run the code, and it looks like I've passed the test suite for the title. That, as you can see, there's a problem. The problem is I've changed the test suite, right? So now when I go to run the grader, uh, now the grader may be, uh, okay, so the grader is going to tell me that something went wrong, and in particular, it's going to tell me that um, I made a change to the test suite. Now, you know, people have found multiple ways to do this, and part of what we're encouraging you to do as part of the overall MP experience is learn things on your own. Go out, try stuff, experiment, find resources on the internet. That's, that's how you learn stuff in the future. When there isn't, you know, a bunch of people waiting to help you and a lot of really detour, detailed resources that you go off and you learn stuff on your own and you Google around and you find tutorials and you find resources and, and you find ways to learn things independently. And if you do that, it's really cool because then you can really learn anything you want uh, and all the things you will need to accomplish whatever it is you're trying to do. Um, However, let me show you kind of one of the better ways to do this uh, in Android Studio. So um, you'll see here that now I can see that there's a change to MP0 test, right? Um, and you can see that, I, and now in this case, this is such a small change that it would probably be easier for me to just fix it by editing the file. But let's say I made a bunch of changes to the test suite and I actually don't want to go back and do them all by hand. So what I can do is I can close the commit dialog. I can open up the project view. Now, one of the things you'll see here is that uh, Android Studio is highlighting this file in blue, and that's because it's been modified. Uh, it's been modified. Uh, and so if I open this up, I would just see and the change I made, which is that I changed the test suite, which is causing the grader to fail because I modified the test suites. So here's another option, right? You can use that side-by-side -side view to undo the changes, but that requires a lot of manual work. Or you can go over here and you can right-click and you can go to Get, and what you want to do is roll back, okay? Now, ro what will roll back do? And now, you know, one of the things about Git is that it's pretty unforgiving. If you make a mistake in Git, like you can potentially lose a lot of work. So be careful here. So roll what is rollback going to do? Rollback is going to undo the changes I've made with respect to the previous commit. So, and I think there's a dialogue here. Yeah, okay. Um, so it's going to ask me, right? But, you know, if you're used to just clicking the blue button or the green button or whatever and working through these dialogues, you'd have to be careful because this potentially is going to cause me to lose any changes I've made to this file. Now, I can do this on a per file basis. I could select multiple things to roll back, right? But what rollback means is go back to my previous commit. Now, because I haven't committed changes to the test suite, these changes are gone. So again, be very careful with this step. If you have like, you know, a bunch of, now this is the test suite, which I'm not supposed to make changes to. So it's probably pretty safe to roll it back. But if I was working in like my server.java or server.kt or whatever, or a file where I had written a bunch of code and you hit roll back, that code, those changes you made are gone, right? And, you know, Git is sort of like unforgiving about this. It's, this is a power tool, uh, you know, really on some level built for people who know what they're doing. And so, you know, it, it doesn't always give you a way to be like, oh, no, 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 don't do that thing. It's like, nope, that's gone. I've done this myself a few times and it's like, oh, uh, you know, usually you kind of remember the changes in main and go back and redo them, but you don't want to. So anyway, it's asking me, I'm going to roll this back. Uh, and, and what's that going to mean? Uh, it means that it undid that change. And so now if I go to the commit dialog, there's no changes uh, in, in my uh, working tree. And if I run the grader, now it's complaining because I don't think I put my ID into here, so that's, that's different. But you'll see that fingerprint mismatch is gone because I've been able to restore the original file. Okay, so two important things working with Git, we've sort of seen how to do here. Uh, one is how to see what changes you made with respect to the previous commit. That's using this commit dialog and then open up that side-by-side -side view, which is quite nice. The other thing is how to roll back changes to a specific file, which is, you know, I go into the project view, I find the file, uh, and then I choose roll back. I go through a dialog, I think twice, I think three times, I hit the roll back button, and now I've rewound to that previous commit. Um, and this is really useful in particular when you modify the test suites, but it can be useful in other cases too, where you've got a bunch of changes and you don't want them. Um, let's say you were trying something and it didn't work and you just kind of know like, I just want to get rid of all of this. 
That's an easy way to go back to your last commit, right? So commit often um, and use Git intelligently through Android Studio to assist with your development workflow.